Hey everyone. Now this past Saturday, I went to Books A Million in Monroe. And then on Monday, I went to Second and Charles in Bossier City and BC Comics in Bossier City. And there were eight books that I found because I was a little behind on some of them. And I'm going to go ahead and reveal these to you. Now, I'm not going to uh, give a brief description of them because after all, there's eight. And y'all still have a show to watch. So here we go. First up is Black Panther number one. Black Panther number two. Civil War number zero. Spider Woman number seven. Silk number eight. Silk number one. Superman Wonder Woman number 29. And finally, Spider Gwen number eight. That's eight I bought, which brings the total number of comics that I bought since December of 1997 to 7,346. What? You're still watching this scene? It's over. Watch the show. Welcome to this week's edition of the Comic Hero Show. I'm your host, Victor Nunley, and I am comic hero. Come to you for Clint's Comics in Monroe, Louisiana, and this weekend we're going to be celebrating Memorial Day. Now, Memorial Day is a time where we honor the, fall, the fallen men and women who served in the U.S. military and uh, made this uh, Memorial Day themed comic hero tee. Um, see the camouflage and then the uh, diamond plate. And then, of course, the American flag, because we live in the greatest country in the world. Alright, so if you're watching this and you have a um, a family member who um, who had fallen in the line of duty, or even if they, even if, if even if they're deceased now, even if they, you know, passed away, like right after after they started their tour tour during your your uh, this episode is is for you. All right, it's time to give away a free T-shirt. Okay, last week's episode asked true or false. Solid was one of the X-Men who made her debut in John Sy's X-Men number one in 1975. The correct answer is false. She actually made her debut in Captain Britain number one in December of 1976. And six people have answered correctly, and I'm about to draw their name for a free t-shirt. So the winner of the free Comic Hero t-shirt for this week is... Keith Adams from West Memorial, Louisiana. So congratulations, Keith. You win yourself a free comic hero tee. Now, here's the question for this week. Who played the voice of the Incredible Hulk in the animated series from, that ran from 1996 until 1998? Here's the hint. It's the same person who played the voice of the Hulk in... Oh, hey, Bobby. How'd it do? <laughs> He's the same person that played the voice in the Hulk in the Incredible Hulk, Avengers, and Avengers Age of Ultron. Now everyone that answers correctly will get a free, uh, will, will be qualified in the drawing for a free comic hero team. So I gotta ask, any questions? I heard that. All right, I have three questions for this week, and, and the first one is from Deirdre Williams from Monroe, Louisiana. She asks, have you heard about Comixology Unlimited wanting to provide a Netflix-like service for digital comics? Um, Deirdre, uh, you know what, I, I'm kind of old school when it comes to comics. I'd, I'd rather be reading print than uh, digital, but that doesn't mean I'm not willing to, to you know, to give digital comics a read. And, you know, I, I looked up the, uh, the info you were talking about, and it all looks great. The only thing that 
uh, only thing about a comicsology that that I've that I've come up upon, you know, in terms of uh, of publications, they don't carry DC and Marvel. They 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 mainly carry like publications like Image and IDW. I mean, nothing wrong with that. I mean, Image and IDW are. I mean, I, I tell you, especially IDW. I mean, those those two. I mean, Image has been around for for like 25 years, and IDW came on the scene oh about a decade ago. But they're still great independent um, publications, and who knows? I may just look into that. All right, this next question is from the New Evil Twin. Sorry, Brian Ferguson. Uh, Brandon Ringo from West Monroe, Louisiana. I say that because Brian Fer like he I, I call Brian Ferguson the Evil Twin because he always had a question on uh, on the show. But sorry, sorry, Brian. There's there's a, there's a new sheriff in town. His name's Brandon Ringo. But anyway, he asks. I seriously need thoughts on DC Rebirth number one. Were you planning on buying it? Brandon, that's like asking me, am I am I going am I going to do a show on a weekly basis? Of course I am. Alright. Now this last thing. This isn't a question. However, it's some it's some very great information that my friend Mary Leonard from Franklin, Louisiana has um, has um, looked up for me. And it, and it has to do with Batman and Superman. In the eternal debate, who would win in a fight between Superman and Batman? Here's one debater. Here's one debater's point of view. Remember now that Batman is more than just a man, even in comparison to Supes. Batman has transcended his humanity. The moment Bruce's parents were killed, so too was Bruce. It has been argued that Superman is the real man and Ken is the constructed identity. And I agree with that, but I contend that Bruce is also constructed. The millionaire playboy is an act, a mockery of humanity made to match the terrifying darkness that is within. There is no Bruce, just that there is no Kent. Batman is a nightmare. Villains are afraid of him. Superheroes are terrified of him. Batman has made secret plans that detail how to take down every hero. He is a thinker. A manipulator. We all agree that he's smarter, but seriously, next to Batman, Superman is a bloody dunce. I mean, when he opens his mouth to talk, Batman feels the room around to get stupider. In this sense, there would be no fight. If Batman wanted to, the question is not if Batman would destroy Superman, it's how. Whether it's kryptonite, magic, or his loved ones, Superman's weaknesses dangle out in the open, right from manipulation. The god would be twisted, disassembled, and broken, emotionally and, and psychologically, with Batman never even coming into view. <sighs> that that kind of dawned upon me, but never in that, but never from that degree. <laughs> All right, um, that's it for any questions. I mean. Yes, any questions? I'm, I'm sorry. Now, nobody has uh, requested a DC versus Marvel fight. However, I have one of my own, and it's full of metal, and it's very diverse. Representing DC, we have Steel. And representing Marvel, we have War Machine. These two are going to duke it out in a segment I like to call The, the Comic, Comic Hero, Hero Throwdown, Throwdown Showdown. Showdown. Welcome to The Comic Hero Throwdown Showdown. Today, it's Steel vs. War Machine. Steel is a genius engineer and inventor. His powered armor grants him superhuman strength, durability, endurance, flight, various other cybernetic armaments, a variety of communication and sensor arrays, and wields a seemingly indestructible mallet. War Machine is an experienced soldier trained in armed and unarmed combat and is an aviator and aviation engineer. His armor grants him superhuman strength, supersonic flight at Mach 3, repulsors, and a variety of offensive and defensive weapons including missiles and lasers. Who will win? In a way, this is brains against brawn and brains. This would start off with hand-to-hand -hand combat, with War Machine having the upper hand with due to military training. Steel, knowing he can't win this way, resorts to using his indestructible mallet. War Machine says, Okay, you want to use weapons? Let's use weapons. 
These two unleashed their full arsenals. War Machine Blast Steel was a concussive missile, but Steel bats it away with his mallet. Big mistake. This missile was designed to stay locked onto his target until impact, no matter what. Steel tries to outrun the missile, but it strikes him and causes him to fall. War Machine then ends by flying 700 feet in the air and flying down hard at Mach 3, delivering an armor-piercing heart punch to Steel. War Machine wins. And that concludes this fight on the Comic, Comic Hero Throwdown Showdown. Alright, I hope you enjoyed the Comic Hero Throwdown Showdown. If you have any requests for one, contact info is down there. Alright, it's time for Comically Speaking, so without further ado, let's talk comics! All right, first thing I want to talk about, and I failed to talk about that about this in last week's episode, is the, the passing of a legendary artist. And I'm talking about Darwin Cook. Um, I have some of his artwork, um, and then I also have uh, a, a feature film that was ba where you know based on a book that he um, illustrated. It was called Justice League: The The New Frontier, and and then. Um, I also have some covers that that he um, that he did for DC uh, for, for a month, and man, when I found out about that, I mean, Darwin Cook. One thing about him, he had a love Jones for the Silver Age of, of the DCU. I don't think. I mean, now I'm all about moving forward, but for somebody to have the passion and the the dedication and and loves to you know have the passion for for such a, an amazing era of comics in terms of, of, of artwork. Oh, excuse me, it was him, and he you know he's going to be missed in the comics industry. Don't and I tell you there'll never be another Darwin Cook. All right, next thing I want to talk about X Men Apocalypse. It comes out in theaters today. I am I am so excited about it. I'm actually going to go out and see it. Um. Wow. Now, the one thing about this movie, it's set in the 80s, but, um, specifically in the year 1983. And uh, some of the characters that are going to be in it are, uh, well, of course, Apocalypse. And there's also going to be Professor X, Magneto, Jean Grey, Cyclops, Jubilee, Beast. And the one character everyone was so excited to see Psylocke being played by the lovely Olivia Munn. And I'll, I will go out and see it, and I'll let you know what I uh, think about it in episode 115 of the Comic Hero Show right back here next week. All right, the next thing I want to talk about um, is DC Rebirth. Came out this week, sold out everywhere. Well, that is, that is unless you wanted to buy it uh, online, then, well... Then yeah, you can you can easily find online. But if you if you want to like go to a comic book store, Books a Million, or Second and Charles, or anywhere like that, you're probably not gonna find it. You're just not. But don't worry, more copies are coming out. Um, it's such a great. I I, I mean from from some of the uh, you know when I watched the the DC Rebirth live uh live broadcast on, on YouTube um, on Easter weekend when Jeff Johns and Jim Lee who pretty much are oh and Dan Didio who are the, who are the three the three guys that are mainly responsible for for rebirth I think it's going to be great I mean it's really going they're really trying to clean up the mess that they made with the new 52 and oh and um, thanks to Chris McDaniel over at BC Comics I actually found out who's responsible for the new 52 universe and his new universe and it and it was a and it's a character who is actually being featured in the Comic Hero Throwdown Showdown twice, and it's one of both times. But I'm not going to say who it is. I'm not going to give it away uh, in case I anyone uh, hasn't read it yet, because you know that's that's not me. But um, I can't wait to read it. It's gonna it's gonna be great. And it's gonna be great. All right. The last thing I want to talk about is Marvel. They are, of course, you know there's going to be a, a mini series coming out starting next week called Civil War Two, and um, spiraling out of Civil War Two is going to be yet another Marvel. Now, Marvel, 
I'm just gonna go ahead and just ask why. Why in the world would you want to do that? I mean, what? I mean, you, you don't have to stoop down to the level of DC where if they do something spectacular like Rebirth, you don't have to do. I mean, you don't have to. You don't have to go go to their level. I mean, why don't? Why can't? I mean, what they're doing with this with this Marvel now is that they're that they're re, that's that they're discontinuing some books and then they're going to. Um, Re and then they're going to come out with new number one issues. I'm thinking, why in the world would you do that? I mean, heck, you didn't do that with the first Civil War. Why would you want to do this now? Uh, to me, Marvel is, is, is starting to become it, the, 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 uh, the 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 jealous uh, the jealous high school student to, to DC. Although, in my, in my opinion, in terms of of writing, in terms of artwork, in terms of characters, and in terms of story arcs, Marvel doesn't really need to justify itself to anyone, especially DC. So I, I think, me personally, that's a very that's very excessive and very pointless. All right, that's it for comically speaking. Now then, let's get to the comics I bought this week. Comic books I bought this week. All right, first up, and I'm so excited about this, DC Rebirth number one. Uh, this is a, um, gonna be a brand a brand new, uh, I mean, this is going to be a step in the right direction of DC in terms of, uh, of story arcs and, and characters. And I'm so looking forward to finally reading this. Y'all have no unearthly idea. All right, next up is The Flash number 52. This is the conclusion to the the story arc where the Flash goes up against the Riddler, and he is uh, pretty much, and he's pretty much uh, placed explosives on everyone in Central City, and, and told the Flash that if you that if you even run, if you even if you use your speed, if you try to stop me in any way, you will set off these explosives, and everyone in Central City will die. He just. I don't know why in the world he had to leave Gotham for. Oh well. All right, next up is Cap is Captain America Sam Wilson number nine. Um, this takes place right after um, the standoff. This is kind of like the uh, the fallout from Avengers standoff, and Sam is also getting used to the fact that Steve Rogers has gotten his youth back. And. Uh, so will there be two Captain Americas? Let me get let me get right back to you by letting you do that up next is Captain America Steve Rogers number one. Now I've heard some stuff about this book that I'm not going to talk well, that I'm not gonna talk about, although it's all over the news, and even writer Nick Spencer has gotten death threats over. Um I've heard about it, I'm not gonna talk about it because after all, you know, um I don't wanna spoil it for anyone. But I'll let you know what happens when I when I read it. All right, up next is Back to the Future number eight. This is part three of the uh, the the Continuum Conundrum story arc, where Marty and Jennifer end up finding uh, a, a Doc Brown who has no memory of of who he is or, or who Marty or Jennifer are, or his life in or his life past and present, and. This series really, really does deliver. You want to know why? Because Bob Gale is writing the book. What better person to have the to have than the guy that wrote the screenplay for all three movies? All right. Next up is Justice League number fifty. This is it, folks. This is the conclusion to the Dark Side War story arc. Now, the the character named Grail, who is the the um, the estranged daughter of Dark Side. Is out has has already killed Darkseid, and now she's out to destroy the Justice League, and and she's really going after Wonder Woman in the worst way. What she do, oh what does she do? Oh she kidnaps Steve Trevor and then how somehow imbues him with with um, apocalyptic powers, and um, it's all but it's all going to conclude. Oh and get this, we also find out the identity of the Joker. 
All right, and then finally, you know what? No, I'm. I'm yeah, and, and finally, Superman. Sorry, folks. It's 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 pouring outside. It's thundering and lightning. No, I did. No, I did not see a a mysterious figure from my past. Because if I did, I'd probably go outside and beat the living daylights out of him. But anyway, uh, next up is Superman number 52. This is the conclusion to the last days of Superman story arc, or as some people would call it, Super League. Now there, now the identity of the um, of the the faux pas Superman is, is just some some schmuck from 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 the state of from the state of Minnesota. I mean, he is so. I mean, but he, I mean, he's from Minnesota, he goes by a different name, but he is so sure that he is Clark, that he is both Clark Kent and Superman. Oh, and then the Superman from the New 52 universe is about to die. To all to all y'all that are um, um, fans of the New 52 Superman universe, which aren't very many people, my condolences go out to y'all. You know what, I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, reveal this book. Okay, next up is... Deadpool number 12. Now, this one, Deadpool and Shikla divorce. All right. That saying I bought, which brings the total number of comics that I bought since December of 1997 to 7,354. Well, I hope you enjoyed um, this episode and not really enjoying this weather. I mean, it is super nasty out there. Um, a few acknowledgements. I want to wish happy birthday to three of my classmates from Homer High School. Uh, Xavier Cooper, Carrie Onamont, and and, uh, and Deanne Knighton. Um, happy birthday, guys. And also happy birthday to uh, Kayla Finn, who I was in band with at ULM. And this weekend is Memorial Day. And it, and um, be sure to uh, remember, you know, all the men and women who served in all five branches of our U.S. military who are, who aren't with us. I mean, they don't necessarily have to have fallen in line of duty, you know, to to be honored. I mean, they could, you know, been veterans who had you know passed a, who who had you know, passed away along the way. I mean, um, I know quite a few people who um, who have. Um, you know, served in, in the U.S. military who, who are no longer with us. And um, next week's episode, episode 115, y'all are going to be in for one heck of a treat. I'm going to be, for all all next month, in the month of June, I'm going to be bringing back the Comicology 101 segment. Now, I haven't done this segment in, in a year. The last time I did did one was when, uh, uh, when I did Black Panther. I mean, not Black Panther, Ant-Man. Well, this one I'm going to be doing the Black Panther because a lot of folks don't know who the Black Panther is. They don't know a lot about him. I mean, as a matter of fact, some some folks haven't even heard of him until um, Captain America: Civil War. Well, that's what I'm here for, folks. If it has anything to do with comics, that's what this this show is for. So, all next month, Comicology 101 segment, the Black Panther. Oh, and and. And here's oh the, the question for uh, the free comic hero the free comic hero uh, T for next week. Who played who played the voice of the Incredible Hulk in the uh, 1990s in the Incredible Hulk anime series that ran from 1996 through 1998? Everyone who answers correctly will be entered in a free t will be entered in a drawing for a free comic hero T, and which will take place in next week's episode. Uh, here's a hint: he also played the voice of the Incredible Hulk. In the Incredible Hulk movie from from 2008, then also the, the Avengers and Avengers: Age of Ultron. And to my understanding, he is also going to be playing the voice of the Hulk in uh, Thor: Ragnarok when that comes out next year. Oh, and if you don't, and if you, and if you care to buy a T-shirt, if you don't, if, if you, if you don't mind, you know, paying for a T-shirt, I do, I do make T-shirts for a fee. Um, for adults, they're ten dollars, and for uh, for children, they're five. 
and for infants. And, and, as, and yes, I do make shirts for infants. As a matter of fact, I made a onesie for uh, one of my, uh, for two of my friends who are expecting their first baby any day now. And, um, and, and oh, by the way, I hope uh, my, under, my understand. Oh, and, and yo, he's gonna, he's going to be the most, he's going to be the most amazing looking baby when he wears his onesie. Um, yeah, but for 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 uh, um, for infants, they're three dollars. Um. Now, there, however, there have been some times where I have made folks T-shirts for as you know as a gift, as, as gifts. Like for example, um, my friend Lindsay Walker. I'm actually supposed to be uh, meeting meeting up with her tomorrow to give her 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 free tea. She ended up I ended up making a free tea for her because she graduated from ULM. But um, yeah, but if you want to pay for uh, again, if you want to pay for them, adults, adult shirts are ten. Uh, children are five and infants are three dollars. All right, um, it's a good show. Yeah. Kind of a little bummed out because of the weather, but you know what? It, it, it may be wet outside, but it, but, but it's hot as heck in here. Woo! All right, I'm Victor Nolley. I'm the Comic Hero. We'll see you next week for episode 115, right back here at Clint's Comics. So till then, be safe, be blessed, be a hero, and happy Memorial Day, everyone. Thanks for watching. Hey everyone. Now, a few days ago, I went to both Second and Charles in Bossier City and Books a Million in and Mon here in Monroe. All right. In the last week's episode, the question of the week was true or false. Psylocke was one of the X Men that made her debut in John Size X Men number one in 1975. The correct answer is false. She actually made her debut in Captain Britain number one in December of 1976. All right, six people have answered correctly, and I'm about to draw their name for a free T-shirt. Uh-oh. <laughs> Blooper reel. <laughs> okay, last week's episode, the question I asked was the free, the Comic Hero free T-shirt. Uh, <laughs> Blooper reel. <laughs> okay, last week's episode, I asked true or false. Solid was one of the original X-Men who made her debut. Original X-Men. No. No. Of course. I have two questions for this week, and the first question is from Deirdre Williams from Monroe, Louisiana. She asks, have you heard about Comic-Con's young, 